Hi, guys. Welcome back to Girl on Girl with your host, P. I am so glad you're here. And this is a podcast where every single Monday I talk about different topics, anything that has to do with queerness, or also things like about my own like wellness journey that I like to look at as kind of therapy sessions. So we can like talk together and like learn more things. Thank you so much for stumbling across this podcast, and I hope you've been having a really good start to your Monday so far, whether you're doing that commute to work, maybe you're going to the gym, you're going for a walk. Either way, I'm just happy you're listening. (laughs) So by the time I'm actually posting this, this is a Monday, and I wanted to talk about not the weekend that just passed, but the weekend prior to that, just because of like when I'm recording this versus what I'm posting. I wanted to talk about how much fun that weekend was and how fun and like soul filling it was, if that makes sense. Like, you know, those weekends that you have that you're like, oh, this was just such a good weekend and it like filled your soul completely. I actually saw Sarah for the listeners who know Sarah. She's been my old co-host of this podcast for like three years. I saw her with a bunch of friends on Friday. It was Sarah, my friend Kyle, who's been on the podcast. So shout out to Kyle. He talks about his journey as a gay man. And this happened probably about a couple of years ago um, when he was on the podcast. We met up with Teen, who's also been on the podcast. Shout out to Teen. Um, she talked about long distance relationships and her experience with that and our two friends Margot and cam and we've honestly all been friends for like over a decade i've known teen since high school but kyle Margot, cam and sarah like we all met around the same time and it was just so amazing to like all be there together and see sarah and this was probably going to be the last time we see sarah before she goes to portugal so that was just such a nice night we went to the spot called downtown winery which i want to give a shout out to downtown winery is one of my favorite bars in toronto it's on ossington and it just has the most delicious wine that is not even an exaggeration my partner crystal and i would go like so often especially during their happy hour I'm a wine drinker in general. I really do enjoy a glass of wine, but there's just something different about downtown winery where it's just like the right amount of like juiciness. It's not too sweet and it's very, very refreshing. It's uh, Portuguese owned. So if you guys ever find yourself in the Ossington area and you want to try something new, definitely check out downtown winery. You will not be disappointed. The rest of the weekend was really fun as well. Teen actually stayed with Crystal and I the whole weekend, so that was super fun. We went to um, the park. We got Lambo's Deli, which was amazing, played some cards, listened to music. And then my friend Kyle had a little rooftop terrace party, which was great. Um, It was at his new place, so we wanted to, like, see his new place and, like, celebrate with him there. A rooftop party in the summer in the city is just so nice. It can sometimes feel like a movie moment. You look out, you see all the lights. It's like a summer night. You're eating like pizza, having drinks. Oh my God, Margot made the most incredible sea salt chocolate chip cookies. I swear I ate like five or six of them. <laughs> they were so good. So Margot, if you are listening to this, your cookies are amazing. But yeah, overall, it was such a fun weekend. I loved that friend time and I feel like as we get older, it's sometimes not always as easy to like see your friends as often as you want to by seeing them in person or even in texting or calling or all that because there's so many responsibilities I feel like that just get thrown at us as we start to get older. It's annoying. I don't know why it has to happen that way, but I feel like the reason why I wanted to talk about this weekend is because I feel like I just saw so many of my close people in like consecutive days. And I'm really, really grateful for that because we don't always get that time, especially because like, you know, Sarah's moving away. Like she's been living in Vancouver and now she's going to Portugal. And I think all of us also have things happening and like life is changing like right before our eyes. And I'm like, oh my God, like you really just cherish those moments. I just wanted to squeeze all of them forever. You know, if you can squeeze your friends as much as you can do it, it's um, really important to keep the good ones in your life. So for this week's podcast episode topic, I wanted to talk about people pleasing and why we do it. I myself am a recovering people pleaser. I say that because like I'm still working on it. I feel like there's a lot of things I am starting to unlearn, especially because I feel like I've been a people pleaser for all of my life, honestly. And 
I never really noticed those tendencies in me until like the last couple of years. So it's something that I'm like really trying to work on. And I hope you can all relate to it because I feel like that term is like tossed around a lot, but I don't know if it was something I always identified with until I started looking at the ways I was being and also how things would really affect me. Where I'm like, am I just being a people pleaser right now? And like, what are things I can do to stop being one, you know, like become more firm in my decisions, set more boundaries and feel good about them without questioning like every decision I make. And that was kind of a big thing. I didn't realize it was affecting me for this long. So I guess like the way I want to break down this episode is where does people pleasing really stem from? Why are some people people pleasers and how are some not? And what can we do to unlearn these tendencies? Because at the end of the day, being a people pleaser isn't isn't going to help you live your life authentically because you're almost like living for other people. And it sometimes doesn't have to be that deep in that sense, but in little ways, you'll notice as you start to let go of your people-pleasing tendencies, you will be so much happier and so much more at peace. And I'm not an expert in this topic, but this is definitely speaking from my own experiences and how I've noticed it's affected my mental health and how letting go of it has made me become even stronger and I feel really good like internally and we're going to break this all down when I think about the beginning of where this even started I mean we can go back to my childhood right I talked about this in the last podcast episode kind of briefly but when I was a kid I was very very shy like extremely shy that people would be surprised maybe like People who really knew me when I was younger, they would probably be surprised that like I kicked off a podcast. People who knew me maybe more in high school or like as I started to get a bit older, they definitely maybe weren't so surprised because I I really came out of my shell when I was probably like 10, 11 and especially felt like very much myself around friends and I had opinions. I had things I wanted to speak about. So I would, I also loved like being in front of a camera. I loved dancing. My best friend Kaylin and I, like all we used to do when we were younger was like film ourselves making music videos and like doing skits, like all those things. So that was a very like creative side of me that always came out. But I think the people who knew me and like when I was younger, they would probably be like, oh my God, now she has a podcast. Like I just, it just goes to show I was very shy. I, I sometimes wonder if some of the people pleasing came from a place like when I finally got out of my shell and I found I was so happy to be in social scenarios or happy to be around my friends and happy to play, happy to like be active. I almost felt like I just wanted to do all the things all the time. Like it was almost like a, a hyperdrive. And my sister, who's eight years older than me, she would always point out to me like, you just get so much FOMO. You know, like you always feel like you need to say yes to every single thing. And like, why is that the case? I feel like when I was younger in high school, I would try to pack my evening with like so many different things. You know what I mean? And sometimes it would be like family obligations that would have to happen as well. But also I'd be like, well, I can't miss this like friend hangout or I need to go meet this person for coffee. I need to do whatever it is. Right. And my sister, who's a lot older, who would already, you know, was in her 20s at that time would be like, just say no, like set some boundaries. I I would have a really hard time doing that. I would just be like, no, 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 it's fine. Like I can I can pack all these things into one. And I think having FOMO is a big portion, but also another form of people pleasing is like not wanting to let people down. And that's something I was really struggling with. I thought if I say no, this person's going to be upset with me. And I used to think that was like a very young mindset to have, which which it is, I think, at the end of the day, like to care so much about what people think feels very young, but we do carry that like as we get older. I mean, I'm still unlearning that and I'm about to be 30 in a year. You know, I'm turning 29 this year and then I'm going to be 30. It still follows me like to this day. 15 year old me still thinks those things now. I'm getting better, but I'm st I still need to work on it. So I always found it interesting that my sister was very much more of like a 
oh my God, no, just say no, you can't do it. And I'd be curious to know if she was like that as a teenager and maybe as she got into her 20s, she just like became a little bit more assertive and more firm. But we're different personalities. So for her to be like, no, just just say you can't do it, just made so much more sense. Whereas I was like a lot more agreeable and a little bit more like, I just don't want to disappoint anyone. Like I want to make sure I can show up for everything. And I noticed I would overextend myself a lot. There was also parts of me that had low self-esteem in the sense that like I was always seeking approval from others. And I wonder if that stemmed from like the shyness or like introvertedness I was or I felt when I was a kid. That was an insecurity of mine that I was so shy. So once I started to come out of my shell and be more of like a social butterfly, I guess you could call it that, I kind of felt like I had this pressure to like always be there. And it's something I kind of broke down with my therapist a little bit where she's saying when you're seeking like validation from other people, sometimes that stems from you as a kid not really getting that validation. And it's not that I didn't get that validation from my family, but because my sister was so much older my parents both worked. I actually noticed when I was a kid, I spent a lot of time like alone in ways. And when you're a kid, you're like soaking like every experience up like a sponge and you don't even like realize what kind of impact that would have on you. So I feel like as a kid, you know, when I was younger, my parents would still be at work. I'm like coming home from school. I'm like, my mom had meal prepped, so there would be, like, dinner already ready to go. I would, like, heat it up and, you know, watch a show. Like, I, sp I spent a lot of time on my own because my sister was already off at university. I didn't not like it. I think I was fine with it. It's never like I had complaints, you know, that I had the house for a couple hours before my parents would finally get back from work. But I wonder, like, if me as a kid, having that alone time made me, like, crave more people around. Like, I don't know if I'm making sense there, but I think when like opportunities came up and eventually like I'm in high school and I have my license, I can drive. I'm not like relying on my parents to drive me places. Like I can go essentially wherever as long as I have access to a car. I was always there and I definitely was seeking validation from others. I would like get a high off of it or feel very fulfilled. And I wasn't always like filling my own cup with my own things like just in myself I feel like my happiness was like very reliant on like my friendships especially in high school I think that's where it started for me the people pleasing and as I started to get older it was still kind of there you know like really leaning on my friendships and then my romantic you know partners or situationships I was really leaning into that as well and once again, that comes from a place of like not feeling fulfilled in your own cup. So you're putting so much like pressure on other people to kind of like fill that cup up for you. As I started to like really dive deep into myself and start to really enjoy myself and enjoy my own company and also kind of love the flaws I have or embrace them, you know, we always want to work on ourselves, but I would also start to embrace like things about me that we're not always the greatest, but I'm like, listen, I'm human and I'm going to work through it. As I started to do more of that, I started to notice like my people pleasing tendencies going away and it wasn't easy. Like I think there were times it would feel very uncomfortable because when you're used to being like a quote unquote, yes person, it's really hard to say no. <laughs> it is. And I know People who are not like this, if you're like, I say yes when I want to, I say no when I want to, kudos to you because that's incredible and you have a lot of like self-confidence. When I first started to do that and I'd start to set boundaries, it was very uncomfortable for me. And I remember even a friend had told me one time, like there was something I had set a bit of a boundary to and I... I stuck by it. I felt good by that decision. And I and I told her that. And she had later told me like, um, oh, I'm just so used to you being a yes person. And I really took that comment back. And I was like, I know she didn't mean harm by it. Like it actually, she meant it in a way like you're always like down to do things. And I think that can be like a, a good quality in people. But I think also if people are used to you being such a yes person, it's 
it's not good because like once you kind of start to put your foot down, people might question you and be like, oh, you've changed. You're not the same anymore. You're not this. You're not that. Whereas if they were around someone who was a little bit more assertive and less agreeable, they might not be surprised that someone's like putting their foot down to be like, you know what? I'm not going to go out tonight. Like I'm going to I'm going to stay in because I kind of need some R&R or something or I'm really tired. Like it's been a long day. You know what I mean? I I feel like um like not that people oh well actually I don't know if this is even the case, but I feel like the more you are a yes person, it's almost like the less respect you'll get because and I don't mean it like they don't respect you in a malicious way. I think it's like they're just more like shocked or surprised. Whereas the person who was already like more assertive from the get-go, it's already like, I respect it. I get it. You do your thing. If the, you know what I mean? So that was something I really took back and was like, I wonder how I can unlearn or uncharacterize myself as this like always yes person. I definitely am the type of person who is open-minded. So I don't want to take it like my being a yes person is completely negative. But I think there's a way to balance it out. Like I truly say yes to the things I'm available for and I have the capacity for. I only say no when it's it's just not in my best best interest to do at that time or there's other things that I have as a priority and that's not always a bad thing. And I think sometimes like we need to work through that as people pleasers to be like, even if I, if I say no to something, I'm not doing it to hurt the other person and I'm doing it for my best interest because at the end of the day, it's really important to look out for ourselves and our mental health and what we can handle. Otherwise, you're overextending yourself a lot and I would do that. So when I told my friend, like, you know what, maybe in the past I was a yes person and I was overextending myself in those moments, you know, like it started even when I was in high school to my 20s, gaining this reputation of always being a yes person. But really, I've at many moments, I was feeling very drained or would find myself in scenarios where I'd be like, you know what, I wasn't really in the mood to go out that night. I did go out and I kind of wish I stayed in. And I've had many moments like that, you know, and as you become more sure of yourself and you're not so reliant on like appeasing others, I feel like it it's so peaceful to make those decisions and just be good with it. You're not worrying like, well, what is this person thinking? Are they going to be pissed at me if I don't go, etc.? Sure, maybe in the moment it might stir up some conversation, but people forget about it and we all move on with our lives. And I also want to point out that as we're getting older and priorities change and responsibilities just pile up, I really respect the people who respect if you can't go to something or when you're setting a boundary. Those are my kind of people. I absolutely love it because we're all just trying our best here. And I've been on the end that's, you know, had to set more boundaries just based on like things that are happening and also looking out for different factors, my mental health, my finances, all this stuff. And when people are just like, I totally understand, don't worry, we'll catch up another time. That makes me feel really good because the worst if someone's like guilt tripping you over it or being like, well, you used to do this or you're changing, stuff like that. Honestly, I think it's good to be changing. It's different if you're changing and you're treating people badly or you're being malicious or your your whole character has changed that it's like very uncomfortable and like, are you sure you're not getting influenced? Things like that. That's a whole different story. But I think when people start to like set boundaries and they're they're changing in that sense because they're not so much of like a, a yes person anymore, I actually think that's a positive. I'd be like, you're growing. Honestly, you're growing and that shows you're looking out for yourself like you're you're looking out for your own like mental well-being and i love that 
I love that for you, honestly. I feel like I have certain friendships too where we're on that wavelength where, you know, you're trying to make plans and it it has to get pushed because just like all these things keep piling up. But at the end of the day, you're like, you know, I love you. I'm always going to be there for you. And that's never going to change whether we see each other as much as we used to when we were younger. I feel like when I was younger, my weekends were very filled with lots of friends things. I mean, like you're sometimes when you're in your earlier 20s, you're used to seeing your friends like literally every day. Obviously, when you're living with your roommates, you're seeing your friends every day. But then you fill up your time too a lot with like seeing them like after work, doing this, doing that, grabbing dinner, grabbing a drink, going to the park, all these things. I still love to do all that stuff, but I've just noticed as like responsibilities have piled up, it can be harder. Like sometimes the weekday is over and I am exhausted. I have to think about doing laundry. I have to think about what's for dinner. Well, I also try to do some side projects on the side. So there's things that we have that the nighttime rolls up and you're like, oh my God, I got to go to bed. Like I'm exhausted. I think I've been getting better at setting those boundaries and I really appreciate the people who can like meet me there too and understand it because we got to be looking out for ourselves and our mental health and in a world that's so go, go, go all the time. It's good to just sit back and have some like relaxation time for yourself. I remember I used to feel like guilty at times too. Like let's say I had a free night, but someone wanted to like go out. Some people might very confidently respond back and say, you know what, I'm just exhausted. I'm going to have a night in. When I noticed I was a people pleaser, I would still be like, well, you know what, my night is free. Like maybe I should still go. Like that's something I still had to work on. Whereas now I'm listening to my body more. I'm listening to my mind more where I'll say, I actually just want to stay in, order a pizza and watch a scary movie. That is all I have the capacity for tonight. And people get it and they like, they'll respect you for those decisions. There's actually a book my cousin recommended to me. Shout out to Gabe. It's called Crucial Conversations, Tools for Talking When Stakes Are High by Stephen R. Covey. I still need to read it, but he said it's all about like having those crucial conversations that you might be like scared to have, but it's so important to do so. And it actually can make people really respect you when you're not so like, I don't know, agreeable for everything. Like I think people are like, yeah, I get it. I respect it. Another thing too I actually had to learn was that a little bit of FOMO is okay. I am the queen of having FOMO sometimes. I am. But as I've gotten older, I've kind of like almost embraced sometimes having a little FOMO and no, you'll survive it. You're going to be okay. Just don't overdo it for yourself and also only do things when you're fully like comfortable. And a lot of that can also be even your finances. I've learned a lot about like money management over the last year. And I actually sometimes have to make some decisions to say no, because I'm actually really focusing on my finances and how I can grow it and what my goals are. I have financial goals and things that I'm like, I would love to be in this place by this age. And in order to do that, I actually have to say no to certain things that maybe I wouldn't have in the past. I guess like a good example is like traveling or trips. I'm someone who in a heartbeat would be like, yeah, I want to go on this trip. Like sign me up. Just put it on my credit card. But I would notice over time, I don't know if I was always financially like good to go on those trips. Like you could still go and you're paying. But at the end of the day, should I have waited? Yeah. There's many moments I look back and I'm like, yeah, maybe that was like not the best time for me to go. Now I have more of this awareness where I can say no to things and I'll plan it and be like, I'll go when I'm good at this point because now it feels like the money is working for me and I'm not just like putting something on my card and just like hoping for the best. And I feel like when we have these obligations, especially with investing, if we want to buy property eventually, like there's a lot of factors to consider being older that I definitely didn't have in my mindset when I was like 25, 26. I wasn't really thinking in that way. So those are also things where you need to accept like FOMO might still be there, but it's okay. We all survive it. It sucks in the moment. Yeah, you might be like, damn, it kind of sucks being responsible. (laughs) I feel like sometimes my friends will say that we'll have a conversation and I'll be like, I can't right now because like 
as much as I would want to, I, I need to save up or I'm saving up for something else. Like I have a lot of expenses coming up at like this month, whatever. And I'm always like, uh, adulting or being responsible. But at the end of the day, it's worth it. And you're going to feel very grateful for it later on. If we want to discuss certain tactics on how to like unlearn people pleasing, it starts with the little things, setting boundaries, only doing the things that you really want to do. And there actually might even be moments where you want to do something, but never overextend yourself. Like I've been guilty of this. I'm a girl who loves to double book. You can still do it, but sometimes it's like, could could I have pushed something else off? Like I could have probably like postponed something because a lot of your energy can, it can get drained. You know what I mean? When you're like overdoing it. And I'm guilty of that because I want to just do all the things all the time. That's something to work on is like really setting those boundaries in and being like, what can my social battery handle right now? Like what is going to work for me and how am I going to be like taking care of myself and my body? Because we got to be taking care of ourselves. I also think too, journaling is a really good one. If you're feeling like what are, why do I feel fearful of saying no to certain people? And I think at the end of the day, if someone doesn't take your boundary seriously or you start to notice maybe they're not being a very good friend and the way they're reacting to you having boundaries in the first place, really look into that. Really do because it's not a reflection of you. If you're being firm in what you want, honestly, I would always say it's them if they're reacting poorly because it has nothing to do with you. It could be this point where they're at in their life, but somehow they're taking it out on you. Really pay attention to the friends who respect your boundaries and hold them close because those are good friends because at the end of the day, they care about you. They want to make sure you're showing up to whatever it is they're proposing and you're feeling good. And they're like, I, I would always say like, I'm the type of person where it's like, if you can make it great, if you can't, that's okay. I'm always like, going to miss you. I love you from afar if we don't see each other that often, but I only want you to go to things if you can. Like, don't feel obligated to because I understand how busy life can be. And I love that energy to be reciprocated back because if someone's guilt tripping you or making you feel like you did something wrong because you set a boundary, that's a red flag and I would really look into that. And don't look at it lightly because there are such things and I, and I will talk about this maybe on another podcast episode, but friendship breakups, it's not fun. It's really uncomfortable, but sometimes that can happen and it's a part of life. And I won't get into it too much this episode because I actually feel like that could be a whole episode on its own. But if you guys have any questions for me about friendship breakups or you want to like talk more about it, or if you've, you've experienced one, send me a DM and let's talk about it. So yeah, setting boundaries is key. Having those crucial conversations with people and start to do it in like little steps. Even if it's like saying no to little things at first, because you kind of know if you get that little like feeling in the back of your head, like, okay, I'm overdoing it. That's when you start to challenge yourself to like overcome the people pleasing. Another thing I wanted to talk about is I feel like once you start to stop people pleasing because you're tired of just like overextending yourself or once you've gotten better at your boundaries and you realize your friends are still your friends, it really allows for good energies to be brought into your life because you are assured in yourself, you're assured in your decisions, you're going to attract people who are the same way. Because I really think like you attract who you are. I, I fully believe that. And if you're leveling up and you're on your vibes and you're like, this is what I'm striving to be, you're going to be around people who are that same way and they'll respect you. They'll respect you for that. So always pay attention to that too. The people who you're fearful of, or even if it's not that like you're fearful of them specifically, but you're fearful about what they're going to think, test it out, see how that is. And then their response will tell you everything. And then you'll know how to move forward from there. At the end of the day, I always want you to remember that you should be living life for you, you know, when it's it can be a struggle and like trying to overcome people pleasing takes a very long time. Like I'm still recovering through it. I wouldn't even say I'm a recovered people pleaser. I am still working through these tendencies and I notice them in myself 
all the time. Like even when it comes to certain decisions I make, sometimes I sit on them for so long and I'm be like, well, I could have said yes. I could have gone. I could have done this. But then that's my people pleasing talking. That's not actually me. That's like, like I'm assured in my decision because anytime I do it, I'm like, well, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. But then the people pleasing part of me comes out and I'm like all of a sudden overthinking it. I can also be a chronic overthinker and I'm trying to unlearn that as well. So it's not easy, but be kind to yourself and take the steps, even if it's to write things down. You can talk to your family and friends about it if you're actually really struggling and you're like, this is something I have. Like, do you have any tools about like what you would do? For me, sometimes it really helps that I actually have a lot of assertive people in my life. I feel like I've attracted that (laughs) just naturally, even in my friends, my family, my relationship. Crystal is a very assertive person, and I really admire that side of her. She's the opposite of a people pleaser, like first and foremost. She knows what she wants, and she won't do things unless she really wants to. Crystal and I have actually had a lot of conversations about her being like more of an assertive person and me being more agreeable because there's pros and cons to both, right? I feel like I admire that quality. She has a lot because she's not a people pleaser. Like she'll do what she wants and she's like, sorry, it is what it is. And I'm like, I love that. But she sometimes tells me like the disadvantages to that. Whereas if you're very agreeable and maybe more open, you might find yourself in scenarios when you're like, that was a really good memory or I'm glad I did that. So, I mean, there's pros and cons to each. I guess at the end of the day, though, like for me, trying to let go of the people-pleasing tendencies only helps because I'm becoming stronger through that. And it's okay to like recognize those traits in myself and not be mad about it. Kind of be like, yes, this is me and I'm working through it and I'm getting there. And it really helps you assess those relationships in your life that are like equally supportive of this. And there's like that mutual respect of them getting it. And then really start to distance yourself from the people who you notice take advantage of your people-pleasing tendencies because there can be some people that really like that you're a people-pleaser and you'll notice once you stop being a people-pleaser, all of a sudden you're not close friends with them anymore. And that can be something really tough to swallow. It can be a really tough pill, but if you look back at that friendship, maybe be like, was I, were we really close mainly because I was like always available or they knew I would always be around for like certain things they wanted to do? I don't know. That's a whole other topic. Like I said, that we can dive into if we want to talk about like maybe toxic friendships or friendship breakups. But I really hope you enjoyed this episode. It was more of like a sit down chat kind of therapy session. And I want to do more of these. But as I talk through it more and I kind of realize like, wow, maybe a lot of my people pleasing came from wanting validation. And I think that's really normal. And a lot of it does stem from childhood. And I think we all know this, like a lot of our childhood experiences translate at like into the way we can be as we get older and all these kinds of things. There's so much to unpack there, but I hope you learned something from this episode. I hope if you are a people pleaser, don't worry. I'm out here. (laughs) I'm working through it, but I 100% have been. And we're only getting stronger and we can get stronger together. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it there, but I hope you have a really, really good rest of your week. And I will see you next Monday.